what's up guys Azura here and we are finally here for our monthly end of month tier list and this month with set 9 quite a bit has changed into the meta uh, a certain zero damage lord has warped the meta around it quite a bit this month so without further ado we'll talk about uh what the meta is looking like this month uh first off b tier the playable decks a tier the good decks s tier the best of the best uh i think i'll just say this now i think the, i think i will unorder b and a for the for from now going forward i think there are just too much decks, mainly in A tier, for me to want to order them in order. So uh, take that. So uh, look at this. Uh, I just guess it's right down now. Unordered. Ordered. Uh, I think it's well that right. And uh, same with this. Unordered. So these two tiers from now on will probably be unordered. So yeah, without further ado, let's go on the list. So we'll start from the bottom first. The pure I think Masai belongs here. Thavas belongs here. This deck belongs here. Starvator probably belong here too. Uh, I think these are the B tier decks. These are all like still playable decks, but at the end of the day, I think these decks are a little lacking now. Sharheart has win con is basically just guarded tricks, but uh, I think this deck just doesn't do enough. Same with Messiah, same with Starvaders. Uh, Starvaders are cool, but uh, again, with the zero damage war bringing around, those decks have, absolutely have to be considered. So uh, Sharheart already didn't have the best matchups against the other decks. He had, he had cool gimmicks against Alt Mile, uh, Sharheart, Strike, Kill, Theory in the back row, and all that, but I think this deck just overall lacking. Messiah doesn't really have a good matchup against anything, it's just kind of a baseline playable deck at best. Uh, Star Vaders can be okay against some decks, but again, no, it's not, not, nothing too impressive. And uh, Thavas has just basically been completely power corrupted by this point. Uh, they did get a new stride, for, uh, specifically the um, the Wailing Thavas, but it is just a guard trick, and for the most part, Lambros is a better finisher than the Wailing Thavas, so was that. And uh, not to mention, again, Zero Damage Lord is, re is a very relevant deck, uh, and. Uh, Thavas can't do much against it because uh, if you, you never get CB, you can never get your fourth attack with uh, Basil or Dia. So uh, even though Lambros is free, you will never hit the fourth attack because you will never have the CB to pay for the Basil of the Dia. So, uh, so these decks all belong here. Again, interchangeable order. These decks are all just playable at best. So now with the A tier decks, uh, I think uh, if you see here, I, I have both Luard and Ogma. Uh, Ogma represents the zero damage version of the build, and uh, Luard represents the. Like the a normal, more standard version of lore where you're not playing for zero damage, so yeah. Uh, first, we'll first look at some new inclusions. So, I knew some new inclusions I put in here are Deleters, uh, Fenrir, and Gav. These decks were not here last month, I'll go over why they are here this month. So, uh, Gav, because I'll, I'll talk about Gav last just because it has a got, it's Gav's because it got new support. Uh, Fenrir, there has been a list running around where the, like Fenrir just like it sends the deck out super hard, you stack a bunch of uh, stands in the bottom, you abuse Taro, like you reset your stuff. And you can get hit really big numbers and attack a lot of times on first ride. So uh, this deck has a cool gimmick in which it could just kill you on first ride. Uh, and also because this deck, for the most part, relies solely on soul blasting to do most of its effects. Uh, like the Spender Shard does need CB to proc off, but uh, for the most part, uh, I think this deck has ways to play around zero damage lore. But uh, this deck can hit really big numbers, can reset a bunch of times. So uh, just because of that, I think this deck is a playable deck with a cool gimmick and a very high ceiling. So. I think that's why I choose to put Fenrir here. Uh, the leaders are here purely because zero damage. This deck, in my opinion, has the best zero damage lure matchup. Uh, this deck, it binds the drops on the stop ritual. It deletes the van to stop Blue from trying for free. And uh, judgment, and they have a free back row lock, meaning they can't, uh, unless they fill up their entire back row, uh, this deck can't actually shut down Lure from using its drive bonus and sacking cards off for Ogma as well. Uh, so I think this deck just has a really powerful, just has a really solid matchup across the board against zero damage lore and does okay against the other decks as well. Uh, Vanish Delete and uh, Delete does make uh, Alt Mile and Asha annoyed at them as well because uh, Asha can only learn dupe stuff and Asha losing by me because they can't recycle stuff. Alt Mile can't recycle the Great Twos and not be able to recycle Great Twos from uh, from uh, drop back to deck and not giving Pi Kimmick scaling a little worse for the deck. So I do think Deleters have a pretty okay niche just for this month specifically. I do think that once Zero Damage Luard is no longer a deck, well, we will see. Uh, Personally, I'm of the opinion that the deck is probably dead now just because every deck has an inherent out to it now. And uh, I do think the leaders will start to fall off. I think the leaders will be at most at B tier, maybe even off list for me next month. But just for this month, I think the leaders are a very, very good anti meta pick. And uh, Gav is here because uh, Gav got new support. Uh, Ultiel, the uh, the stride lets you recycle stuff that you, that you uh, rescue check, is I think is very, very good for the deck. Uh, the deck before already had a, like, a pretty okay. Uh, kill turn, uh, the, all the rescue checks and calling stuff like that, I think it's pretty cool, but uh, the deck this month got a way to not deck out, which is the main important thing, and they also got a new extender with one of the Great Twos that let you uh, 
uh, when something gets rest restricted, you can call it into the same column as it, so you just call over for an extra attack. So, I think uh, with all of those things uh, for the deck now, the deck now no longer has a deck out issue and has even more extenders. I think with those, just those two things alone, I think this deck is actually a very playable deck. I think this deck is a, a very solid A tier deck, in my opinion. So, yeah. And next for some older decks, I think uh, Hari, Night Rose. I uh, just, just, just put them here just because they're put them together here, I guess. Something like this. Again, I'm not in not order, but I think it just looks nice like this. Uh, these two decks are, again, basically the same thing. They, like, push the five, do some really cool multi-attacks. So I think these decks are both very solid. Nothing too inherently wrong with them. I think Hari is uh, probably a little bit better against zero damage Luar just because this deck does not need as much CB to do its full-on, like, scaling combos and all that stuff, pushing the five. Night Rose does need its CB to actually kill. Because once that five, you have no CB, you can't actually kill. But uh, I think Hari still might have, like, a, f a few lines that let you do it. I'm not sure. I've never actually played this deck. I've just seen people play it, but... uh. Yeah, I think these decks are very similar, very just solid decks all around. Uh, both probably don't have the best match against Zero Damage Lord, but against other stuff, this deck has uh, pretty, it's overall still relatively solid. So I think both still belong in A tier. I think Prisms are still an A tier deck. I know everyone is on the Prism hype. I know like a lot of people think this deck is S tier. I personally do not see it. Uh, I don't think this deck is particularly special. Again, like it 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 pushes really well. I, I can push kind of well. Has strong turn two, has pretty okay, okay stride, has a pretty cool kill turn, but uh, I don't know, I just don't see it. I don't know, I actually don't understand why people rate this deck so highly. I personally do, personally myself, I didn't rate it that highly, just since you put an A tier, 9 S tier, so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just my personal opinion, I don't think this deck is anything too, too special, but I do think it is still a very powerful deck. Uh, next off, we have, oh, Vanquisher, right? Uh, Vanquisher falls in the same category as, um, as uh, the leaders. Uh, very good anti-meta pick for specific and zero damage Lord. I think Vanquisher does do a lot worse against the other decks. I think this deck, despite being able to buy and drop someone to stop alt Mile and Asha from recycling stuff, I do think alt Mile just runs Vanquisher over because they just kill you before you have to bind enough things for it to matter. And Asha, an Asha player can just play smart and not let their third get binded too early. So, yeah, I think this deck falls in the same niche as um, as the leaders. Uh, I, I counter to Luard, but um, uh, plays pretty poorly into a lot of other things, so. That's why I have Vanquisher in a solid A tier. Uh, next up, we have uh, Chrono Jet, or just Gear Chronicle in general. I think Gears are a. I'll just put. I guess. I, I did say they weren't ordered, but uh, those something like this, I guess. I guess I'm like kind of ordering it, but uh, uh, Gears. Gears have a. Uh, Gears actually have a lot of ways. To, Gears actually do pretty okay into a few of the good decks. Uh, I think Gears, the only matchup where Gears kind of get ran over by is uh, Alt Mouth, but uh, Gears do have a super easy out to Jingle Thuria and Upheaval. And uh, Gears have enough plays that cost zero CB that, they, in my opinion, they can play around zero damage Lord to some extent. Uh, Chrono Jet Dragon G's uh, Stride Bonus is free. Fate Rider is free. Uh, you have Epoch Maker that can you extend. Lost Age can help you screw over the back row. Uh, this deck has enough uh, free options that are relevant in that matchup. That I think this deck is a very solid contender just for being a solid tier deck. Plays okay into other things, but uh, most importantly, this deck has a pretty solid zero damage Lord matchup and can deal with Jingle 3 super easily as well. So... I think, with all that being said, I think this deck is a very solid A tier deck. And then, uh, next off, uh, two decks that I've decided to bump down solely because of Zero Damage Lord is Blade Master and Gurguit. So, I think, in my opinion, if Zero Damage Lord did not exist, I think these two decks would still be up in S tier. Uh, Gurguit more so, uh, Blade Master, I'm a little bit iffy on now. I think this deck is starting to fall off just a wee bit. Not, not too much. I think this deck is still very powerful, but, uh, I do think the other decks are starting to slowly ramp up in power. Uh, so slowly, slowly starting to ramp up a little bit more in power. So I do think Blade Master is starting to fall off just a little bit. But uh, Gurgrit got so many good cards in the new set. Uh, in this set, they got uh, the new Gurgrit stride is really, really good for pushing. Uh, it lets you scale super well. Lets you extend. I think this this Gurgrit stride is really, really good. The new Grace three Gurgrit is pretty okay too. Uh, I do actually think after a month of playing around with it, I do think it's probably a little bit worse than the original Gurgrit, but. Uh, as Gurgit does have its uses, it is, I think, very matchup dependent which Gurgit you want to ride. But for the most part, I think the fact that new Gurgit's uh, Stride Bonus cost of Soul makes it a little bit worse. But uh, its GB2 might make a difference. Uh, is so probably more impactful in some matchups. Uh, is very rather is very matchup dependent. As, is very matchup dependent as to if it's good or not. But uh, having an extra Gurgit to ride is always a good thing, just because uh, it makes it so you miss, a woofing ride is a lot harder now. But uh, this deck got new a lot a lot of new good cards to throw into the deck. The Gurgit Stride, the uh, the new Gurgit Grade Three. Uh, they got a Grade Two, which is a um, which is a Lop Ear 
for Gurga, it gets really, it's a solo attacker and it's a lobby, so you can send discard card extension to the other side uh, to uh, call another card to attack to the other side. So um, with all those cards, I think this deck got so many good cards. I think this deck uh, next month will probably be in S tier. Just a little heads up. I think this deck next month, once the Ordinary Story starts to fall off a bit, I do or fall off in my opinion completely. I think this deck will go back up to S tier. But just for this month specifically, I think this deck belongs in A tier just because it has a very uh, in my opinion, a very poor zero damage lure match just because most of its plays require one CB. Your only CB zero play is uh, Campbell, and the Campbell is can't exactly kill from five, kill at five. So, um, so because of all that, I think this deck does uh, struggle a bit it's just this month. But starting next month, this deck will be very good again. Uh, Lead Master in a very similar boat. Uh, this deck doesn't have the best uh, zero damage lure matchup. Uh, your the deck does have access to four roof flare because I think this must be you should probably play four roof flares just because of uh we're existing. It is your best CB zero. It is your only CB zero option, so it is there. But on first try, you're just kind of playing vanilla. Second try, you do that. You have the option for crit to push, but uh, I think overall, uh, blade master without CB is just a lot worse than uh, than what it could be with with its CB letting you actually use CB. So uh, just I think just because of that, just because of the fact that uh, zero damage reward exists. Blade Master falls off just because of the fact that this deck is very C CB reliant and does need its CB to do things. This deck is very good at counter charging for basically free, but if you get never get the damage to counter charge to begin with, I think that uh, Blade Master does fall off quite a bit because of Luar. And finally, we have uh, these three decks, four decks, I guess. Uh, I think regular Luard is a solid tier two deck at best, a tier, or an A tier deck at best. Uh, the deck does have win cons, but it Again, this deck has very hard counters in these two decks. It has a win con, it has a solid game plan. It's pretty consistent as long as you draw into the Lord Grade 3. But uh, I do think this deck is doesn't do anything specific, specifically unfair. Uh, if you're just actually hitting the opponent, giving them damage to play with. Because uh, this deck's best finisher... Oh, oops, let's not put it down there. I think this deck's uh, best finisher is like the Diablos and uh, Stacking Crits and all that, which is still there. But uh, I think regular Luar just doesn't do anything too unfair enough. So yeah, I think the regular Luar is a solid A tier deck at best. And finally, we have the S tier decks. I think these three decks are still, or these two decks are still up here, and I think Zero Damage Lord belongs here as well. Uh, Order-wise, I think just for this month, actually no, I think Asha is still the best deck, and I'll get to why this deck is good even this month. So I think the order is something like this. Uh, we'll get to Allure last, but I think Asha is still the best deck because Jingo Thuri is still beyond oppressive. Uh, yes, this deck does need CB to do its plays, but this deck against Luard can just play the deny, deny game against Luard back because this deck can also just choose to not deck out. Like, like this, this is a matchup where, because uh, most decks cannot just not swing a Luard and not give them CB as well. Asha as a deck can actually just out, can, can drag the game forever along with Luard because uh, you have Pia's, you have, uh, you have uh, your Thoreys let like, recycle cards back into the deck. You have a bunch of cards that don't have cost that let you put cards back into the deck to keep recycling. This deck can actually keep up with Luar in terms of not decking out, and I think that is probably the way the deck had to play during this month against their damage Luar. You couldn't give them damage, because if you gave them damage, and since you have so many resists in your deck, you will absolutely just get blown out by um by Ogma a lot of times. So I think just because of that, uh Asha uh has ways to deal has a very unconventional way to deal with zero damage Luar, but it, it can't deal with it nonetheless, and then against the other decks. Jingle 3 is still a super oppressive game plan for other decks to deal with, so yeah. Uh, Alt Mile, on the other hand, is probably uh, still uh, just, uh, again, a really solid deck. It can kind of punch into everything, just kind of roll, roll over everything, especially going second. But Alt Mile specifically has a lot of good zero CB plays. Uh, Gablade pushing to 5 is free. Uh, Ariel just calling cards out for you for uh, for no cost is free. Uh, Saint Blow is free. I think Saint Blow is very good in this matchup because of uh, Saint Blow giving everything anti-retire. Ogma can't retire stuff, and so he can't record that out of your hand. So I think those two are very relevant. Uh, uh, Alt Mile is great. One slots are also super flexible, meaning you can tech in a bunch of peekers into the deck specifically for that matchup. Also helps against other retire matchups because your boosters can't die. So uh, I think Alt Mile just being like super CB efficient is very, very good. So it deals with Luard really well. It runs over everything else really well. And uh, it just it's just overall a very good deck that just happens to also have a really good matchup against Zero Damage Lord. I think when I was playing Zero Damage Lord myself, I think Alt Mile was probably the deck that gave me the most trouble, uh, aside from like other aside from like the two obvious hard counters being the bind the bind decks and bind drop zone. Because Alt Mile just pushes your face in for free; they don't really care if you're a five. They'll just start running you in eventually. And because uh, they're calling a bunch of stuff for free with Ariel, anyways, uh, 
Then losing a card or two out of hand doesn't make that big of a difference for them. So yeah, Alt Mile, very, very good deck. I think it's still one of the best decks. And yeah, and finally, the Boogeyman of this month, Zero Damage Luard. So this deck invalidates so many of these other decks down here because just because of what the deck does. The deck does not give you any CB to play with. It's stacked, it gets to a crit stack, and it just kills, tries to like, shoot you dead from like one hit, maybe two hits. Uh, uh, that being said, it, it's called Zero Damage Luard, but sometimes, uh, if, you, if you know your matchup correctly, Sometimes you can give like one or two damage to a kill turn becomes a little bit better because uh, a lot of the times uh, killing from zero is actually very hard because that requires you to literally have no uh, that requires you to have no crit sucking your damage they're all in your deck and you just go like crit man go like crit 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 five crit like that or uh, spectral blaster kill from zero so or spectral yeah spectral blaster kill from zero so uh, this deck I think is very hard to pilot properly uh, but I think this deck is very very oppressive in what it does some decks just can't most of these just cannot deal with it uh it all weapon cards their hands really good uh carnivore popping back row is really good uh near the end of the month or like middle of the month uh there have been lists running around that just play a bunch of carnivore dragons and uh and they pop your back row for free and then they uh just play 18 cameras so they can hit you anyways so uh, there's death lists like those running around but i think both lists are like pretty fine on how they do it and like there's a list that turbo tries, tries to Kill you fast as possible. There's the uh, 18k intercept list that just uh, shows a wall up so you can't hit them. But regardless of list, I think uh, this deck is very, very oppressive. Definitely warped the meta around itself for this one month. But uh, with all the new buffs to the heal guardians and the harmonics being a, li being a literal fuck you to this deck, I think this deck will definitely fall off next month uh, into the abyss because uh, this deck's gimmicks no longer works now, in my opinion. So, yeah. So, that's it for this month's tier list. Uh, tell me guys what you think below down below in the comments about this month's meta and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out